Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you an action horror film, Day of the Dead, Bloodline. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with an unknown creature that mauls people brutally. These creatures have zombie characteristics and kill people with ease. Because of the carnage, the people are alerted by the devastating news through television. However, the newscaster cannot finish her report as the zombie-like rotters approach them. The news team quickly runs for their lives before being eaten alive. In the next scene, the city is already played by rotters. People are being eaten by rotters left and right. A woman witnesses all the attacks as she walks through the city. Moreover, she sees a rotter break a car's glass and eat the people's smelly part inside. This implies that the rotters have superhuman strength. Suddenly, the woman's phone rings and she picks it up. Her daughter says that she should be careful and stay inside the house. However, their conversation is interrupted when a rotter chases the woman. Fearing for her shitty life, she channels her remaining energy to sprint as fast as possible. The scene then transitions to four hours earlier before the tragedy and the carnage happen. In a medical center, a medical student named Zo is in a laboratory studying the science of pathology. The professor asks them their theories on how the bald man died. Zo thinks that it is because of influenza. Impressed, the professor asks Zo what specific strain of influenza killed the man. Although not given the correct answer, the professor is still impressed with Zo's sharpness. In the next scene, Zo's friend invites her to a night out. However, Zo is not in the mood because she's still devastated that she did not find the correct answer earlier. In the next scene, the professor approaches Zo to check on her regular patient, Max. Zo says that she's not comfortable working with him because the patient is crazily obsessed with her. However, the professor says that Max has more antibodies than a normal human being and it is her first time encountering such high numbers. So she wants Zo to continue working on him because the opportunity to study such a person with abnormal antibodies is rare. Without having any choice, Zo just agrees to do the work. As Zo meets him, Max is already saying creepy things about her. Zo tries to make everything professional, so she doesn't want to waste any time and proceeds to get a blood sample. Zo starts with his left arm. However, Zo is creeped out when Max shows his bloody right arm, which has a wound that spells Zo's name, implying that Max hurt himself just so he could write Zo's name on his arm. Moreover, Max starts touching Zo, making her uncomfortable. Fortunately, another person comes to the room to protect the poor girl. Not long after, Max stands up and leaves the room. Zoe's friend tells her to be stronger and not let Max do it to her again the next time. After the creepy moment, the friend invites Zoe to her night party. At the party, the bearded guy says they have more drinks chilling in the morgue. Avoiding socializing, Zoe volunteers to go get the beers. As she enters the morgue, the bearded guy makes fun of her as he hides from Zoe and surprises her afterward. Not liking the joke, they get the two kegs of beer to get drunk. The bearded guy leaves the morgue first, carrying the first keg. As Zoe is about to get the second keg outside the morgue, Max again creepily appears out of nowhere. He says that they have a connection they should not ignore. Denying that there is any connection between them, Zoe asks Max to get out. However, Max is now acting aggressively, and Zoe screams for help at the top of her chicken lungs. To shut her up, Max punches her in the face, making her fall to the ground. He is now forcing himself on Zoe and uses his strength to undress Zoe for some hormone therapy. However, his plan does not work when the supposedly dead person from the pathology class earlier stands up and mauls Max. Even though Zoe cannot comprehend what is happening, she moves and runs her sexy body away for safety. To alert everyone, Zoe screams and warns everyone about the rotter-like creature. However, all the other people do not believe her. Terror after terror, the professor is also already infected with the virus and becomes a rotter as she bites one of her students. Moreover, the bald rotter comes again and looks for more victims. Witnessing the bloody carnage, the remaining students escape the area. Unfortunately, before Zoe can escape, she witnesses her best friend being eaten by her rotter professor. The scene then transitions to five years later after the rotter outbreak. It reveals that it had become a global pandemic and only a few survived. Zoe is one of the lucky people to survive and make it to the refugee camps in time. Their work is to learn as much as they can about the rotters. However, the camp lieutenant is pessimistic about finding a cure. He believes that they have no chance of ending the pandemic. Still, Zoe and her colleagues remain optimistic and focus on their work. She and her colleagues serve as the camp's doctors treating the illnesses of the residents and are tasked to develop a cure. Zoe discovers that one of her patients has a contagious lung disease. 
To alert everyone, she goes to the council meeting and tells about her patient's situation. She advises that they go to the medical center to take proper medical supplies to cure her patient and to prevent the spreading of the illness. However, Lieutenant disagrees with the idea and says going outside is too risky. He suggests that they should just isolate the sick patient. Zo makes it clear that isolating is simply not gonna work. Without having any choice, the commander agrees to go outside and get supplies. At dawn, the team prepares to go outside and operate. While on the way to the medical center, one of the vehicles suddenly stopped, forcing the team to step outside and defend themselves. The mechanic says fixing the vehicle could take longer than expected. The sun already sets, and the team is still stuck in the middle of the road. By nighttime, the team detects rotter presence. They go into their respective positions and ready their guns to defend themselves. The vehicle is fixed in time, and everyone quickly hops in the cars, hoping to outspeed the pesky rotters. Arriving at the university, the team remains vigilant as they enter the building. Fortunately, after checking all the hallways and rooms, the area remains clear of rotters. Retreating, Zoe disobeys the command by going to her old lab and taking some of her sentimental pictures and additional medicines. Unfortunately, what she does quickly backfires when Rotter Max flashes into the scene. Due to fear, Zoe runs and shoots Max using her gun. Terror after terror, the gunshot sounds alert the other Rotters in the building. They now come to Zoe, hungry for human flesh. Fortunately, Zoe can find her way back to the team. However, one of their comrades is bitten by a Rotter behind, infecting him. Knowing his hopeless situation, he asks the team to leave him alone. The team has no choice but to watch their comrade die as they escape the rotters. They then hop in the vehicles and go to the refugee camps with their retrieved medicines. Lieutenant is very disappointed with how the operation ended. He says that they lost a comrade for nothing. Zo says it is not for nothing because they got the necessary supplies. But somehow, Rotter Max manages to get inside the camp following Zo's hormone smell. Max finds his first victim as he mauls one of the camp's soldiers in daylight. After killing the soldier, Max also manages to get inside the building. Despite the tragedies, Zoe can treat her patient with the medicine that they retrieved back at the medical center. To assert his dominance, Lieutenant summons Zoe to tell her that she should not disrespect him ever again in front of other people. Not wanting to prolong the conversation, Zoe simply agrees to leave the room. This happens when Rotter Max hides in the building and stalks Zoe. After the heated conversation, Zoe's boyfriend comes to console her, using words first, and possibly tongue later. He reassures her that she should not blame herself for the death of their comrade. He also thanks Zoe for saving everyone in the camp and preventing the spreading of a contagious disease. After their talk, they share a tongue massage. Rotter Max witnesses the nasty couple and quickly becomes mad and hormone jealous. This also reveals that Max is a different type of Rotter because he still can think and reason. Soon after, Rotter Max finds his second victim as he mauls a poor old technician. In the next scene, Lieutenant complains about a late breakfast. The cook started late because he thought the technician was gonna repair the stove, but he did not come. So Lieutenant orders the technician's wife to find her husband. However, as she goes to his office, he only sees her husband's lifeless, bloody body. What's worse, Max comes to the scene and catches her aging body. The poor woman cries her heart out to seek help. While in the middle of the hallway, Zoe sees Rotter Max. She pushes the alert button to warn everyone about the presence of a rotter. Zoe realizes that Max still recognizes her and even shows her the name that is engraved on his arm. This reveals that Max has not fully transformed into a rotter yet because of his high number of antibodies. Fortunately, reinforcements come and save Zoe. They immediately shoot Max, but Zoe warns them not to kill him. She believes that Max is the breakthrough that they need. She reasons that Max could be the person they need to create a vaccine. With a team effort, they successfully lock Max inside a room. Then, Lieutenant comes to the scene angrily. He wonders why they didn't kill Max already. Zoe reasons that Max has not turned into a full rotter yet. She says that a rotter immediately bites people and proves that Max is not a rotter by sticking her arm out and Max does not bite it. Zoe says that Max's blood could be the recipe for a vaccine. Fortunately, Lieutenant gives Zoe the green light to conduct her research, but only temporarily. Upon examining Max's body, Zoe and her colleague find out that some of Max's organs still have human functions. To confirm that his high antibodies made him immune to the disease, Zoe tames Max to take a blood sample, taking advantage of his tongue obsession with her sexy face. Upon testing the blood sample, Zoe confirms that it is Max's hormonal levels that possibly have made him immune to fully turning into a rotter. However, Zoe's problem now is finding which of the nine hormonal glands it comes from. 
She needs to know the specific source, so she would know where to extract the hormones and produce them into a testable vaccine. Zoe suggests comparing it to the hormones of a live rotter and that it could be possible if they can just take hold of two live rotters. However, Zoe's boyfriend thinks that it is a high-risk and ridiculous idea, but the boyfriend levels his emotions and suggests getting one in the perimeter gate. At nighttime, they start the operation. They let one rotter come inside, while the rest of the team hold the gate. Fortunately, Zoe can get a blood sample easily to the first one. However, she still needs one more sample. The team then lets another rotter inside. Unfortunately, at this point, the rotters overpower the team and it breaches through the gates, killing a few of the soldiers before the team can retreat. In the next scene, Lieutenant sees Zoe's name on Max's arm. He now thinks that Zoe saves him because Max is close to her, like a boyfriend. The team then retreats back into the building. Lieutenant sees one of the medics infected. Zoe reasons that if she can create the vaccine, she could save their comrade. However, Lieutenant does not want to take any risks, as he shoots his gun in the face of the poor girl with no regard for her life. Lieutenant then gives Zoe only 12 hours to create the vaccine, and if not, he will be the one to end Zoe's ambitious goal. Next, Zoe's boyfriend confronts the Lieutenant, who is angry about his attitude earlier. But Lieutenant tells him his concern why Zoe kept Max alive, causing Zoe's boyfriend to begin doubting Zoe. He even confronts her, making sure the vaccine can really be created. He also asks why Zoe's name is engraved on Max's arm, but Zoe says that Max is a psycho that abused her. In the next scene, Max falls into a scuffle with one of the soldiers and steals the key to his handcuffs. Interestingly, Max also regains his ability to talk. He repeatedly says to Zoe that she belongs to him. As Zoe compares Max's and the living rotter's blood samples, she confirms that her theory is right. Max's blood could be used to create rotter vaccines because it has high antibodies. She then calls her boyfriend to come to the lab to celebrate. However, the ray of hope fades quickly as Max unlocks his handcuffs and attacks Zoe from behind, trying to force himself on her again. Fortunately, Zoe can retaliate and fight back. Max now lingers in the whole camp. The team then warns everyone in the camp. Max's victims now turn into rotters, slowly creating a squad of rotters infiltrating the camp. More and more dead people flash in the scene. Lieutenant also orders everyone to kill Max. If they do not comply with his command, they will be executed without hesitation. In the parking lot, Zoe meets Max, who is taking the child hostage. Angry, Max lets go of the child and goes to Zoe instead, attacking her again. Zio can free herself, but hordes of rotters from the perimeter gate now attack every person in the camp, killing many people. Although the soldiers can fight back, they are simply outnumbered and overpowered by the rotters. Two rotters feast on Lieutenant's body, killing him. Fortunately, Zoe's boyfriend opens the gates in time, allowing Zoe and the child to return to safety. However, he gets infected in the process. On the other hand, Zoe and the child still have to pass through Max to get inside again. Stealthily, Zoe hides behind Max and stabs him from behind, making his organs come out. She finishes Max by decapitating his head, finally killing his lifelong abuser. Zoe and the child return to the building safely. As they go back, Zoe sees her infected boyfriend about to take his own life, but she stops him by saying that she can still create a cure that would prevent him from turning into a rotter zombie. She finally persuades her boyfriend to trust her. Zoe tests the vaccine for the first time, and it works on her boyfriend. With this new development, things start to get better with such progress and victory for humankind. Zoe announces to the public that they have created a cure. However, the scene fades as a rotter growls from the nearby forest, indicating the survivors' endangered lives. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.